up and move it around, trying to keep warm. <laughs> but thank God we have a heater. Amen. 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 amen, amen. Oh, it's a blessed morning to be here. We are so thankful that you came and joined us for worship, that you braved the cold, and uh, that we're here to all worship together. So just a, a quick note, uh, and this will be an announcement in just a minute, but we're going to have our kickoff tonight for that small group study we're doing, which is over the book, I Will, The Nine Traits of Outward Focused Christians. And we want everybody that can on Sunday evenings to join us for that. It's a great time of, of, of study. It's a great time to, uh, to learn about God's Word, but also apply these things to our life. And it's a great time of fellowship. I can't tell you how fun it is to get together uh, with, with brothers and sisters and join together in, in a more comfortable setting. Now, we're going to have three different groups. Uh, so we have a ladies group, a ladies only group, that's going to meet up here at the church. And then we've got a couple of groups that are going to meet in a couple of different homes. But if you're interested, please, please sign up on the sheet outside so we can make sure that we have enough books and that kickoff is tonight. So tonight we're just going to be handing out the books, uh, going over the schedule, kind of having a brief overview of the book, and then, of course, we're going to have dinner. We're Baptists. <laughs> if we get together, we're going to eat. That's just how it is. But we're so glad and thankful that you are here. This is our first Sunday without a worship leader, but we have, thankfully, Jeremiah and, and Miss April who are going to lead us in worship this morning. And, uh, yes. and uh, it's going to be great. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning that you gave us, Father. And Father, as we... Uh, enter into a new season. I pray you continue to lead us and guide us in each and every decision, uh, Lord, that comes up. And Father, I pray that all that we would do would not be for inward reasons, but for outward reasons. I pray it wouldn't be for our own wants and our own desires, but for your glory and to your name. And Father, as we come this morning, we pray, fill this place with your presence, Lord, and may we worship in spirit and in truth. Thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for this day. Thank you most of all for your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's worship. So like Jeremy said, this is our first day without Brother Lance being here to lead us. So we're going to expect all y'all out there to really belt it out with us. Remember, it ain't about music. It's about him hearing us. And really, really feeling this place. So why don't we all stand up and let's worship together.
say, y'all did great, even without laughs. Amen. Amen. <laughs> right. well, today we will be having a special call business meeting, volunteering service. Uh, the Youth Minister Search Committee will present Mr. Anthony to board. I'm sorry if I butchered the men. Uh, to be hired as the Youth Minister position. And uh, Brother Jeremy already talked about the small groups. And the Youth Valentine's Party is going to be Wednesday, February the 9th at 6 p.m. And February the 11th from 5.30 to 8 is Parents Night Out. Please RSVP to Beth. Um, I believe she can answer any questions that you might have. And there are volunteers still needed for that. There will be no Sunday night activities on Sunday the 13th, uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, also in your bulletin, you'll notice there's a little flyer. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, you can place that on one side. And if you're visiting with us, if you wouldn't mind, give us a record of your visit. And place that in the offering plate as well. Today's verse is John 16, 7 and 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for the sunshine and the warmth that we have today. Uh, we thank you for covering us in your blessings and, and your grace and mercy as well. We just ask that you be with those that need our prayers. Uh, ask also that you give Brother Jeremy the, the words that you intend for us to hear, Lord, and, and just help us as we go through this week to be the people that you want. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't we all stand and continue to worship?
Yeah.
Y'all may be seated.
in that whole dark world, Lord. We ask that you go before us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Children, you are dismissed to Children's Church. I hope they all make it through Children's Church. <laughs> I know one who's going to have a tough time this morning. <laughs> oh, that he is. That he is. Praise God for good mamas. Amen? Yes. It's not Mother's Day, but you should call your mother and thank her today. If you're here today, it means she did something right. So. Uh, go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 2. We're finally to chapter 2. We are going to continue our study through Acts. <coughs> Excuse me. There's, a, there's 28 chapters in Acts, and it took us three Sundays to get through the first chapter. So if you do the math, we're going to be in Acts for a while. <laughs> now, we might have a Sunday here or there where we uh, divert from that. Come Easter time, we'll probably do uh, something a little bit different, but... For the most part, we're going to be in Acts for, for a good while. And we finally made it to the day of Pentecost. Now, T.J. Bach was a missionary to Venezuela and Colombia. It was in the early 1900s. And he once wrote, The Holy Spirit longs to reveal to you the deeper things of God. He longs to love through you. He longs to work through you, through the blessed Holy Spirit, you may have strength for every duty, wisdom for every problem, comfort in every sorrow, joy in His overflowing service. Praise God. He sent us His Son, and then He sent us His Spirit. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for this time that we have together. And Father, I know that none of this would be possible without you. Father, I could not stand up here if it wasn't for your strength and your courage in me. Father, I pray that you would bless us this morning with the understanding of the message that you have. Fill us with your spirit and give us strength and courage to step out of it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. A little bit different. We prayed first. Now we're going to read. Please stand, if you will, in honor of reading God's word. We're going to jump into Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost had arrived... They were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were staying. And tongues like flames of fire that were divided appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And then they all filled, were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages as the Spirit gave them abilities for speech. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. When the sound occurred, the multitude came together and was confused because each one of them heard, uh, heard them speaking in their own language. And they were astounded and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those who live in Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phygre, and uh, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own language. The magnificent acts of God. And they were all astonished and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this be? be. But some sneered and said, they're full of new wine. God, may you bless
bless the reading of your word. Amen. You may be seated. So we finally see the fulfillment of the promise that Jesus has given his disciples. That the helper to come has now come. Before we jump in and talk about what's going on in this passage, I want to talk about when this is happening. Now, we know that God's timing is perfect. How many of you have heard that before? God's timing is perfect. Yeah, pretty much all of us. What that means is not necessarily that God always shows up in the right time. Whenever God acts, it is the right time. And there is no wrong time for God to move or do or speak or act. I've heard it this way. God is never late. But that also means that God is never early. So when did the disciples receive the Holy Spirit? The day of Pentecost, right? That's what we see in verse 1. When the day of Pentecost have arrived. Now, if I had talked about the Pentecost, the day of Pentecost... Immediately, our minds would come to this passage, wouldn't it? And we would immediately associate Pentecost with the receiving of the Holy Spirit. But I understand something. That's not probably the first thing they were thinking about. You see, the day of Pentecost, the feast of Pentecost, is actually from the Old Testament. It's a feast that was instigated after the Israelites came out of Egypt. The word Pentecost literally means 50. And it's called that. It's called the Feast of Pentecost. It's also called several other names. Feast of Weeks. Uh, uh, Feast of Harvest. It was 50 days exactly after the Passover. So, you all remember the Passover? When that was instigated? Instituted? Excuse me, not instigated. <laughs> The difference between those two. Right? <laughs> Never want to get condone and condemn mixed up either. Then you end up in some, some, uh, some props. <laughs> the Passover celebrates when Israel was liberated from Egypt, right? So they were slaves in Egypt. Moses came to redeem them, to bring them out of that slavery. Pharaoh wouldn't do it, so he sent all the plagues, right? And the last one was the one that finally stuck. The plague of the angel of death. Do you all remember what he came to do? He came to kill the firstborn, right? But there was a way that you could, could avoid that. You would take a lamb, a sacrificial lamb, and you would kill that lamb, and then you would take that blood and you would smear it over the door frame. And as the angel of death came down, as he looked upon your door, uh, uh, at your door, he would see the blood of the sacrificial lamb, and he would pass over that home, not killing anyone there. Fast forward to the time of Jesus. When did Jesus die? During the Passover. Signifying that Jesus is our sacrificial lamb. And when God looks at you, he no longer sees your sin. He sees the perfect, sinless blood of Christ spilled for you. So 50 days after the Passover, they would have this thing called the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks, or the Feast of Harvest. And it was a celebration of the first fruits from the Lord. So Jesus dies at Passover. Fast forward exactly 50 days. On the day of Pentecost, and what do we have? We see God pouring His Spirit out upon believers. Signifying these believers are the first fruits this new community of people who have trusted in Christ. See, none of that is a coincidence. All of that is God's perfect plan and timing. And it's a beautiful picture. Now, it's easy for us to get frustrated when we're waiting for the Lord. It's easy for us to say, God, why didn't you come yesterday? Remember, Mary ran out to Jesus. Her brother Lazarus had died. What did she say? 
if only you had been here yesterday. If only you had been here earlier. And how many times have we felt that way in our life? God, if you had only showed up, if you had only answered this prayer sooner, Lord. God's timing is perfect. And it's never the wrong time. There is a plan and a purpose to the Lord when he acts, when he wills, when he does. So we need to remember that. And that's just a tidbit. That's something as we look into it. When we think of Pentecost, we don't think of the, 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 the Feast of first fruits. We don't think of the Feast of Harvest, the Feast of Weeks. We think of the Holy Spirit. But there's so much beauty in that. Another reason why we don't need to forsake the Old Testament. So many people say we have the New Testament. Why do we need the Old Testament? What do you think the New Testament stands on? There are no legs without the Old Testament. We need it. And it brings about a richness and an understanding that we would completely miss if it wasn't there. Now God sent His Spirit. And He sent His Spirit to empower believers. And he does so for a purpose. We are empowered for a purpose. Now, we're not going to dive into everything today because there is so much about the Holy Spirit we could, we could talk about. And not everything is included in this passage. Like we know from other scriptures, the, the Spirit has many different roles. From the scripture reading we had earlier, we know that the Spirit comes and convicts the world of sin and of righteousness. We know that the Spirit also leads us. The Spirit also guides us. The Spirit also helps us understand God's Word. When we come here in the morning, my prayer is, God, send your Spirit that we might understand your Word. Because in my finite mind, I can't understand the infinite. We need His help. The Spirit also is a seal, a marker in our hearts, in our life. That we are His, that we belong to Him. We also know that the Spirit intercedes. One of my favorite passages talks about how even when we don't know what to pray, the Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Yeah. When you're before the Lord and you don't even know what to say, His Holy Spirit is praying for you. Speaking to the Father. So there's so much beauty about what the Holy Spirit does. And we're not going to get into all that. We're only going to look at this passage that we have here. But we need to understand that the Spirit comes and He empowers us. He empowers us to do things that we could never do. That are impossible on our own. Things we could never dream of. I love as Paul was closing out Ephesians, or excuse me, not closing out, he was in the middle of Ephesians, but he was talking about asking the people for prayer, and this is what he says, Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in you, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. God is able to do more than you can imagine. Think of someone in your life that you've thought before. There's no way that person would ever come to know the Lord. There's no way that person would ever come to church with me. There's no way that relationship in our family, in our, in our, in our, in our, uh, with our friends, there's no way that relationship could be fixed or healed or restored. God, there's no, there's no way that this problem could be taken care of. It's just too big of a problem. It's going to destroy me. God can do infinitely more than we can even imagine. Than we can even think about. And that power works in you. God has sent His Holy Spirit to empower us. Amen. To give us strength to give us courage. Believe me, let me step out for a second and tell you just a little bit of history about me because there's several visitors, several people who probably don't know this about me. But when I was younger, when I was in high school and even in the early part of the college, there's no way I ever believed I could do this. 
There's no way I thought I could stand in front of a group of people and open my mouth and words would actually come out. <laughs> my thought was I'd get up here one day and be like, <laughs> and I was a shy kid. I was a reserved kid. My mom liked the word reserved. He's just reserved. He's got it in the tank. He's just waiting for the right moments. But I was a shy kid. If I was with a group of friends, say, you know, the basketball team, I was on the basketball. Let's say we were all together. I couldn't speak up. There's too many of them there. When I felt God calling me into ministry, I said, God, I will do anything you want me to. But I'm not going to be a pastor. <laughs> that was the worst thing I could think of. To stand up in front of people on a regular basis horrified me. And I'm here to tell you that I'm not up here because I got better at it. I'm not up here because I learned to overcome my fear. I'm not here because I'm great at this. Waiting for someone to, to <laughs> disagree with me there, but <laughs> I'm not up here because I can do this. I'm up here because Him who works within me has given me the strength, the power, and the courage to do it. Yeah. Let me tell you, the first time I got up and preached, I was thankful that there was a pulpit because I could hold on to it, not fall down. <laughs> And no one can see my knees shaking so bad. God empowers us to do things we said we could never do. And I know people are looking, and they look at pastors and they say, Well, pastor, it's easy for you. No, it was not. But through his strength that works mightily in me, God has used me for his glory and for his name. God empowers us. To his spirit to do things we never could. And we have this example, this perfect example. We, we, we find the disciples, we find the believers together. And God sends the spirit down and it, with a sound like a violent rushing wind. Now, that doesn't mean it was a rushing wind. It was a sound like a violent rushing wind. And we know that this wind was so mighty and so big that everyone around heard it. That's why they gathered to that room. So we find the disciples in the room and the spirit comes with a sound like a violent rushing wind. It fills the whole house. And then God, uh, through the spirit, gives them tongues of flame that appears on them and rests on them. And then they begin to do something that I wish I could do. Like, I wish I, was, I could do this, right? To speak in a different language without ever studying. How many of you took a different language in, in, in school, right? Okay. I took uh, several years of Spanish. I can ask where the bathroom is, and I can tell you good morning. And I can count to 20, and that's about it, right? I don't have that gift, that gift of language. But neither did these disciples, neither did these believers. God, through His Spirit, empowered them to be able to speak an entirely different language that they had never learned. They didn't take four years of high school and then suddenly start speaking Italian and French and Spanish. They suddenly, instantly began to speak in a different language. Now, we know this doesn't carry on. It's in this instant, God uses it for this purpose. But they're doing something that they never could. Now, we are putting a cart before a horse here because we need to stop and ask the question, where did that power come from? As I said in my testimony, it didn't come from me. It comes from the Lord. It came suddenly. See, one of the things we need to stop and we need to realize is, God, I need you. I need you each and every day to love my wife like I'm supposed to, to have patience for my kids like I'm supposed to. <coughs> we can't 
do that without His help. You see, it takes humility for us to step out and say, I can't do this. But through you, I can. Through your strength, through your love, through your kindness, through your patience, I can do this. The power comes not from ourselves, from the Lord. Now God empowers them. God empowers us. But for what purpose? He gave them the ability to speak languages they've never <coughs> learned before. For what purpose? Verse 11. We hear them speaking in our own languages the magnificent acts of God. God empowers us to tell others the wonders that He has done. One of the most powerful things you have in your arsenal is your testimony. What God has done in your life. How God has rescued you and saved you and forgiven you of your sins. How He's redeemed you. How we can have a personal and intimate relationship with the Lord that we never deserved. And we never earned. And we never could. God empowers us to speak of that mighty, wonderful, amazing thing that He has done. I love my wife and I love my kids. But I tell you, the greatest story I have is how God saved my life. How He redeemed me from the pit. How he has washed away all my sin. God empowers us to speak his word, to share his mighty works with others. Now, there, we have a couple examples here of, of people responding. The first is that some are amazed. Some are amazed. You see, when we declare the wondrous works of the Lord, some people are going to hear it and they're going to be astounded. They're going to be excited. They're going to be amazed. Verse 7. And they were astounded and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all those speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Now, what did these people have in common? They saw the truth. They saw the truth. Verse 11. We hear them speaking in our own language the magnificent acts of God. Now we're going to contrast that in just a moment. But they saw the truth. They saw that they were speaking entirely different languages and yet making sense. We're going to see a different group that they don't see the truth. And they're going to come up with their own idea of what's going on. We'll talk about them in just a moment. This, this group, what they had in common is that they heard them and they saw the miracle. And even though they didn't understand, they were amazed and they believed. You know, it's okay to not understand the Lord. When God told Joshua to walk around the walls of Jericho, Seven times. Do you think he understood? When Jesus told Peter, jump out the boat and walk to me, do you think he understood? It's okay sometimes when we don't understand <coughs> the Lord's plan. But that doesn't mean that we don't believe him and that we don't respond in faith. These people saw the truth and they were amazed, even when sometimes it seems like it's too good to be true. There was a mom who took her son to church one day, and he hadn't been in church long, and they hadn't been in church long, and she was trying to get him back into church, or get their family back into church. And on the way home, she asked him, Son, what did you learn in Sunday school? And he said, Oh, I learned how Moses saved the Israelites. She says, son, that's wonderful. What happened? He said, well, Moses led all the Israelites away 
from, from Egypt because they were in slavery. And then the Egyptians came after them because they're the bad guys. But it's okay because Moses laid down a wall of machine guns to keep them back while they constructed a bridge out of bamboo. And, and, and they quickly ran a, a, a across the river, across the sea. And the mother, knowing the story, said, Are you telling me the truth? He said, No, ma'am, but you wouldn't believe the truth. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to understand God. Sometimes it's too amazing to believe. But marvel. Marvel at them. That's what they did, verse 12. And they were astounded and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean? They marveled at this miracle. They marveled at the beauty of the Lord and His power and His glory. Now what did this group of people that was listening that he heard were amazed. What are they not have in common? They didn't have a language in common. Their ethnicity was different. In fact, we're given a very long list of different people groups that they came from. And this is a beautiful picture. We know from Revelation that heaven is going to be filled with a multitude of people from every nation, every tribe, every people group, every language. And we're going to all be before the Lord worshiping Him. This is a beautiful picture of that. What's going to come? You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to dress a certain way. You don't have to speak a certain way. You don't have to come from a certain culture to know the Lord. And he pours His Spirit out. It's a wonderful and a beautiful picture. Again, going back to the very first thing we talked about, God's timing. So the day of Pentecost was also a time where people would travel to Jerusalem to celebrate. So the day that God sent His Holy Spirit, the day He filled them with power, the day He gave them the ability to speak in different tongues, the city was full of what? The people from everywhere. Is that by coincidence? You think the disciples, you think the believers looked around and said, Wow, man, you know, great timing, God. Everybody's here from all over the place, and, and, and you gave us the ability to speak in different languages. That worked out really well. It wasn't a coincidence. It was God's perfect timing. When we speak the wonderful, magnificent things of God, some will be amazed. But here's a reality as well. Some will reject. Some will reject the truth. And they won't see it. Verse 13. But some sneered and they said, They're full of new wine. So even though the evidence is right before them, even though the truth is right there, even though the disciples and the believers are speaking in different languages that they can understand, they don't understand, and they refuse to believe. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says, In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image. I wish I could tell you that every person you invite to church is going to say yes. I wish I could tell you that every person you share your testimony with would, would, would receive it with joy and gladness and be amazed at it. I wish that every person we ever talked to about Jesus would fall on their knees and come to faith in Him. But the truth is that's not going to happen. There's going to be doors you knock on. They're going to slam and close in your face. And we are called to love that one. And if we know they're going to slam that door, we go back and we knock again. And we ask again. And we keep praying for that person. Because here's the reality. There's nothing that I can do to save that person. There's nothing I can do that can change that person's heart. But the spirit that works in me can break their hearts. 
And we can see God do amazing things that only God can do through us. Amen. T.J. Bob, the missionary I spoke of, also said, if we are going to wait until every possible hindrance has been removed before we do a work for the Lord, we will never attempt to do anything. If you're waiting for every obstacle to be overcome, if you're waiting for every condition to be right, it's never going to happen. But if we step out in faith, relying on the power that works within us, not our power, but His power, believing that God can do anything, we're going to see the miracles of the Lord happen. We're going to see this church explode. We're going to see families revived. We're going to see relationships restored. We're going to see brokenness healed. Relying on ourselves and our own power? Or are we trusting in God's timing and in His Spirit that gives us strength? We want to, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to give you a chance to respond. If you'd like to pray, the altar's open. If you'd like for me to pray with you, I'd love to. But as He calls, will you be courageous enough to answer? Will your answer be yes? Thank you. 
join me in accepting them into the fellowship of Fellowship Baptist Church. Say amen. 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 What a wonderful day. I'm going to ask you all to join me in the back. If you all want to go ahead and make your way back there. And you all can greet our newest members. Newest members. Um, now, real quick, if you are a member, don't leave right at the end of the service. Uh, because we're going to have a short time where we're going to give Anthony a chance to stand up and share his testimony. And then we're going to dismiss him. And after that, uh, we're going to make fun of him. Um, no, okay, that's not true. <laughs> then we're going to vote on whether or not uh, he becomes our new youth minister. So please stick around. Everybody come back tonight at 6 o'clock. Join us. And if you haven't signed up for the Bible study, the small groups that we're having, uh, please do so so we have an idea of how many to expect. And if you're coming tonight, bring some good food. Good food. All right, let's stand and we'll be dismissed. And members, don't leave just yet. Thank <laughs> you.